Hey guys, what's going on? DeltaBot here, and I would like to welcome you all back to another episode of the Drift Tutorial series. Uh, now, a lot of things have changed since the last episode. Uh, if you want to know the reason why it's been such a long lull between the last two ep or the last episode and now, uh, you can check out my last video. I explain everything in there. Um, I have been doing a lot of tandem style, competition style drifting, um, and it's a lot different from points drifting. But I will go over those differences in a later video. I just wanted to let you know that there's there's going to be a, a lot of different things you'll see coming up. But for this one, we are going to be going over entries. Entries are probably the second most important thing behind knowing how to power slide through a turn. Because they really dictate, you know, the line you're going to take. And if you don't have a good line, then you're not going to have a good drift. And if you don't have a good drift, nobody has fun. So, we're going to be going over the handbrake entry, which is really my bread and butter. It should be everybody's bread and butter. It's sort of the most universally useful drift entry. And then we're going to be going over the clutch kick, which I think is a really underutilized entry. It's actually really useful in a lot of cases. And then what seems to be everybody's favorite entry, the Scandinavian flick, which I feel is way overused. It, it seems like people use it for every turn when they don't need to I'll go over that in a few minutes but um, we're not gonna be going over the more difficult entries like the 90 degree entry or the reverse entry mostly because this car isn't really that good at doing them it's tuned for more point style drifting which means less grip and uh, you kinda need grip to do those two entries Otherwise, the car will slide out and sp or spin out or, you know, things that you don't want to happen. So, yeah, we're not going to be doing those. Uh, I mean, you can do them in this car, but it's a pain in the ass. And I'll, I'll just talk, talk about those ones later. So, first things first is the handbrake entry, which I went over how to do it in the basics video. So, I'm not going to go over that again, but I'll explain why it's useful. It's, uh, it's really just sort of the best all-around entry. It's not really perfect for anything, but it's really good at a lot of stuff. Uh, you can enter a corner quickly if you, if you don't have enough or much space. You can enter a corner really quickly and really controllably with it. It's nice and smooth and easy to control. I can place the car really well off of the uh, e-brake of the e entry, which is the reason I use it more often than anything else. Um, but you can also do a really long entry with it. You can have it really drawn out and you can get pretty sideways with it too. There's definitely no limit on the amount of angle you can get based on the entry when it comes to this one. So it's not really the best at anything, but it's really good at doing everything. So I, I, guess, I guess you would call it the jack of all trades entry. And like I said, it's the one I use most. I feel like people should use it more because it's kind of the most, I guess, utilitarian entry of the bunch. Now, the next entry is the, not the Scandinavian flick, the clutch kick, which basically you just get it in a gear, get it lower in the revs, hit the clutch if you're using manual with clutch, and the revs will build, dump it, and the back end will most likely kick out if you've got enough power. Uh, this one is really good for getting into a corner quickly. If you don't have a lot of space or you don't need to have a nice long drawn out entry, uh, the clutch kick is is probably your best bet. Uh, it'll get the car sideways immediately, but that also comes with the caveat of it's, it's really sudden if you can't control it properly. It'll snap the car sideways really quickly and if you don't know how to catch that, you could spin out. So you want to take this one gently if you're first learning how to do it, you know, hit the clutch, dump it, and let the back tires start spinning before you throw the car sideways. Because if you're just learning how to do it and you try to clutch kick right into the turn, you're most likely going to spin out and spin out and spin out and get frustrated and not want to do it. And then go to the Scandinavian flick because it looks cool. <laughs> um, but this one's really useful for, you know, quick entries. If you, if you don't have a lot of space and you just need to get into a turn fast, uh, the clutch kick will actually get you into the turn faster than the handbrake entry. 
and it's it's still easy to place because basically wherever your car is and wherever you get it pointed after the clutch kick that's the line the car is going to take so it's it's relatively easy to do it can be tricky when you're first learning because sometimes you'll over rotate the car but it's really useful if you're in tight spots and you just need to get the back end out fast uh, that's it's my choice for for that situation and it's it's a really underutilized one so the last entry we're going to be going over is what seems like every single solitary person and their mother's favorite drift entry which is the flick and it is basically used for well for every corner when it doesn't need to be because the extra movement of your car makes it harder to place accurately not impossible just more difficult and you don't really need the benefits that the Scandinavian flick gives you on every turn. Now, what are the benefits? Most people don't know. Most people just think, oh, it looks cool and everybody does it, so let's do it too. The reason you use the Scandinavian flick is because, one, it actually adjusts your line. The Instead of, let's say you do a handbrake entry on that corner, you're going to be pointing straight ahead. If you do the Scandinavian flick, the, the line the car is going to want to take actually moves out slightly. It moves outwards. So if you're going to take a longer turn, this is a good entry because it adjusts the line outwards so you can stay sideways easier. Another thing it does is the, the snap that you get when you come around to get into the turn off the Scandinavian flick actually accelerates the rear end of the car. That also makes it easier to stay in a drift longer. And I mean, don't get me wrong, this entry is really useful. It's not that difficult to pull off once you've done it consistently. And it's not that, you know, it's not impossible to place your car accurately, consistently. But it is more difficult to place the car consistently than, say, the handbrake entry, which can do almost as much in long turns as the Scandinavian flick. And it's not as easy to place the drift, and it's not as consistent, in my opinion, as the, as the handbrake entry. So personally, in most cases, I prefer to use the handbrake entry. Now, on f a full bore approach to this turn, I will use the Scandinavian flick because the the drift zone is really weird and you have to start it really far back. So using the Scandinavian flick will give the back end enough momentum to get out and stay out, as well as adjusting the line outwards so you can get around the turn easier. And that's not to say the handbrake won't work for this turn. I will also use the handbrake for this turn. That's it works perfectly fine. It won't get you quite as many points. It won't get you quite as clean a drift and you won't come through it going as fast, but it's still a useful entry for this turn. So really, if you're going to use a Scandinavian flick, make sure it's on a turn. You need a lot of speed or a really long turn where you need to have the back end with a lot of momentum. That's really the only point in using that entry. So um, that's that's all I've got for this video. It's it's more you know step by step. That's why I'm making these videos in this format. Um, the next one will be going over uh, car control, throttle control, angle control, stuff like that. Uh, again, we're just gonna now we're gonna be getting into the more detailed stuff since we got all the complex things out of the way. So that's all I've got for you today. Please leave a like or a dislike depending on what you thought of the video. If you do dislike the video, make sure you leave a comment to tell me what I can do to improve my video making because I'm trying to get the best videos out there possible. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe for more and I will see you all in the next video. Get him, get him, get him, get him, get him, get him. Yeah, got him. Hey Wally, get out of here.